We're going to talk about data types and variables today, which is essentially the whole gambit of how Python is going to function. Whenever we assign a variable like x equals 2, we're telling Python we want a variable called x to equal the value 2. However, the value 2 has an intrinsic data type. Now, there are different places inside the computer in which we can operate mathematically, we can add strings, things like that. And so Python has to know what data type we're talking about, so it knows where to move that data inside the computer so that it can be calculated. So take a look at your screen, you'll see that data types and variables, we're gonna do something called data type inference. And that's what Python does, is where we say, for example, as if you can look on your screen, A equals 17.2. Now this has a decimal, and so this is what is known as a floating point variable. A floating point variable essentially means that we have a decimal and it can move left and right. Whereas line two here, b equals 700, is what is known as an integer. And an integer is just the whole portion of a number. And then finally line three, you can see is in double quotes. The double quotes or single quotes creates what is called a string, and it's going to be verbatim, capital H, E, L, L, and O. Now if I was to do something with these, Python has to know the data type, the intrinsic data type, because if I add 17.2 with another value, that is floating point math. That means we have to carry the decimal, that sort of stuff. If I have 700 plus something else, we know that it's just gonna be integer plus integer, so we don't have to worry about the decimal. And then if it's a string, what would H-E-L-L-O plus something be? And you'll learn later that it's what's called concatenation, where we just take one string and another string and put them together. And so in this case, I use A, B, and C. Now, typically, that's not a good way to label your variables. Instead, we try to label our variables so that people know what was going on. So for example, 17.2 could be, I don't know, some sort of constant. And we could label it like this is the constant or something like that. And Python doesn't care how you make your variable names. There's just a couple rules. But there are some stylistic things that we can do. So for example, this is my variable equals 10. Now, if you notice, the first letter here is uncapitalized, and then everything else, all the other words are capitalized. This is what is known as camel case, and it's used widely inside of programming. Then we also have something called snake case, where we put underscores in between words. Now, these do the exact same thing. We just have to be consistent. Now, if we keep changing the way this looks, it could be confusing on what we're trying to do. When we learn about functions and we learn about variables, other types of variables, there is one style that I prefer over the other where we use functions sort of in a camel case. And then finally we have Haskell case where instead of leaving the first letter uncapitalized, we capitalize it. So you'll see these three different cases in all sorts of different types of programming. In fact, in Python, some people, because Python doesn't care, you get to choose which one of these styles you want to use. So I, I'll, when I do these videos and things like that, we'll actually see my style, but whatever works for you. The only thing I ask is that your variable names have good names so that we know exactly what they're holding, what data they're holding, and what they're being used for. So let's go back and see that the data type inference occurs at assignment of the variable. So for example, in this case, if I was to print my variable, you can see this is the only thing inside of the code. Now, if I try to run this, we're gonna to try to, or Python's gonna to try to figure out, okay, where's my variable? And here you can see this is called the name error. What it's telling you is that the variable my underscore variable does not exist. And so for Python to have a variable, we have to assign it something. So this equal sign here in this case is called the assignment operator. And so that does two things. Number one, it creates a variable called my underscore variable in the namespace so that Python can find out what my underscore variable is. And it's going to assign it to the value two. In this case, the value two is an integer. And so an integer, it knows what to do if I did something like my variable plus five or something like that. Now it knows what to do if I did something like this. So let's take a look at what Python's going to do for me. And you can see it outputs the value seven. So two, if we add five to two, we get seven. So that does exactly what we think it's going to do. Now let me change this into string two. Now it still looks like a two, but now that I put it in double quotes, that's a string two, it's an output of two. So let's see what happens when we do this. And now what you'll notice is it can not concatenate a string. So remember in the double quotes, that's the string data type. And it's trying to add an integer to it, which is the value five. So as you can see, Python knows the data type of your variables by what you're assigning on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Now the, this gets a little bit more challenging. For example, if I said my variable A, so my variable A is gonna take on a new data type. Now Python does not know how to add a string to an integer. It just doesn't know how to do that. 
But what if I add an integer to an integer? Well, in the back of our minds, we could start thinking, well, that should return an integer. And so what I'm going to show you now is a helper function called type. So notice I'm not printing the variable itself, I'm printing the, the type of the variable. So let's put underscore a so that we can see what the second variable's data type is going to be. When I run this, notice it says it's an integer, it's called a class int, int is short for integer. And so that's what it's going to return. So let's get a little bit more challenging with this. Let's say 2.0. So that's a floating point value. And then this five right here is an integer. So if I take a floating point number and add it to an integer, is that going to work? Well, let's find out. Notice it says class float. The reason is because Python knows what to do. They're both numbers. Five is just the whole portion of a floating point number. An integer only stores the whole portion. But it sees that we have a float and we have an integer. When it adds mixed data types like that, it tries to figure it out. Now, as you can see, it could not figure out how to add a string to an integer. But in this case, it promotes five up to a float just temporarily. Just for line three, it promotes that five to 5.0, adds them together, gets 7.0, and that's how we get the class float. And so knowing how mixed data types are going to interact with each other is very important. So let's go back. And so a floating point number is a decimal. Now the reason we call it floating point is because it's actually stored inside the computer as scientific notation. And so because it's zeros and ones, we multiply by two to some exponent, and that moves the decimal either right or left, depending on whether it's a positive exponent or negative exponent. And so integers, you're going to see float, F-L-O-A-T, and they, these can store a certain amount of data. Now, inside of Python, the integers are supposed to be infinite precision. Now, there's obviously limitations of the computer, but Python tries to make it so that integers can be as long as you want them to be. And it does a pretty good job of keeping up with that. However, as they start exceeding the size that a computer can handle, it'll start slowing down the system. Now, a floating point, because it's handled in what's called the floating point unit inside the computer, it can't do that. And so float, floating point have a certain data size. So for example, let's say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, point 20. And let's say we add five to it. Let's just see what happens when we have some large number and we add it to an integer five. Okay, so notice we get E plus 28. And so that actually stands for exponents, not the E as you would think is Euler's number or something like that. It's 1.23 times 10 to the 28. Now let's make this a little bit longer adding random numbers to the end of the decimal. And let's see what happens to our precision, okay? So notice nothing has changed except to the end of here, okay? So inside the computer, we have a finite precision as we go through that. So let's see what happens when we have one, two, three, four, and some long number afterwards, okay? Now you can see it says one, seven, two, eight, seven, two, six, two, five, two, six, two, okay? So notice it stopped right either right here, two, seven, two, 2625262. And so notice we have 721220 that is not being displayed. However, what happened? Well, because it's an, a finite precision, it can't store the 7217220. So that just goes away. And notice it didn't even round it because that should be 263, not 262. And so knowing your data sizes, knowing what's going to happen whenever we do stuff like this is very important. Why? Because as you can see, if we were expecting that to round, it didn't. Now let's change it to this. Okay, notice we get 267. So it rounded here. And so what happens is if it's able to store a value, it will round just one value beyond that. In that case, that was a seven, or in this case, it's a six. In the previous case, it was a seven, but it was so far away, it was unable to round up the next floating point value. And the reason this rounds up is because this six right here is the next to the last six that can be stored. And so it rounds this six right here up to seven, and that's how we get 625267. So the important thing here is not memorizing, okay, what decimal gets truncated, what decimal rounds, that sort of stuff. Typically, we, it, Python will try to round if we do something like this, but just know that floating point has a, a finite precision. Integers have a finite precision, but it's a lot bigger than what we can store in floating point. So if you can store with whole numbers only, it's a better way. Plus inside the computer, adding integers to integers or dividing, subtracting is a much faster operation than using floating points at all. 
let's take a look at checking data types. We've already show I've already showed you the type, and essentially instead of giving you the value, I want the the data type of the variable that we're asking for. So in this case, see if you can figure out but without looking at the screen above. A equals 17.2. Well, we know it has a decimal, so that should be the class float, which it comes out to be. B equals 700. Well, it has no decimals, and so it's going to try to use the smallest data type that it can use, in this case, an integer. And then in double quotes, we can see hello. Now, I've added one thing in here on line 7 that is print type print. I'm sorry. Yeah, print type print. So remember, print we've been using to print out stuff to the user, but it itself is what's called a built-in function. And that's why we see it's a class built-in function or method. Now variables, as we saw, are typecasted based on its first assignment. If we don't say A equals 10 and we try to use A, if we did not do that, then A has no defined value. We're going to get what's called a name error. There is no name called A. And so variables are case sensitive. So if I was to go into my Python here, do variable equals 10 print variable. If I was to run this code, we're going to see that it's going to come up with the value, oh, there we go, value 10. So of course Windows decides not to cooperate while I'm filming a video, but there you go. And so as you can see, it outputs the value 10. Now, let me make this capital V. You can see I'm printing out lowercase v and we've assigned this to capital V. And notice it says name error. And so this is what is called case sensitivity. That means Python treats capital variable different than it treats lowercase variable. And you'll see this a lot because inside of Python, we have what's called a Boolean value, true and false, something like that. Now I could say true equals 10, print true. And when we run that, we get 10. So true lowercase true is fine. But let's see what happens when I do capital true. By the way, VS Code giving me true is blue should cue you into, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be able to do this. But let's take a look at what Python's gonna do. Okay, notice it says syntax error cannot assign a keyword. True is what is known as a keyword. And I've got a few of the keywords listed right here. And you can see true is one of those keywords. So we're not allowed to assign a keyword. So a variable has to be a unique name, but it cannot be a keyword and it's case sensitive. Notice lowercase true, T-R-U-E, is not a keyword, which is why we were able to say true equals 10 and print out true as if it were 10. So here's a few of the scalar data types that we have. We have whole numbers, we have floating point numbers, we have what's called a bool, it's short for Boolean, which is just a true or false value. Now Boolean is actually a zero or one, but we can treat that as a true or a false. And so if we have a Boolean variable, we're going to use Something like this. So let's go ahead and type it out. I say my var equals capital true. Now that is a true statement. When we get into conditions, if statements, loops, and stuff like that, you'll see where these are going to be used a lot. And when we do this, notice it says class bool. And that just tells you that it's a Boolean class that stores either a true value or a false value. And then we can actually reset a variable or actually delete a variable by using DEL. So DEL stands for delete. I say my var. Now, in Python, it will automatically delete your variables after they go out of what's called scope. So it's typically you will not see this, but I just wanted to point it out that it is possible to delete a variable. I would recommend you not do it unless it's absolutely necessary. But if I did something like this, you can see we're going to get something on number seven here, where it says my var is not defined. That's because whenever we have it on line five, we deleted my var and it went out of scope. That means my var is no longer valid after line five. Remember, Python runs just like a book. It starts at the top left and starts running its way to the bottom. Now notice we were able to set my var equals to true, but when we deleted it, there we got no errors. And this is one of the problems with Python. It will not check over your entire program to see if there are any errors. Instead, it'll start running your program. Now if you have if statements, all these different branches and stuff like that, and you never test them, your Python script is going to work fine. It's only until we get to that error code that we're going to actually get an error. And that's one of the problems with Python that we have. Now, there are ways around that, but for this introduction course, you probably won't see those. So we'll talk about array data types, and there's essentially two that I want you to know. There are three that I have listed here. One's called a tuple. A tuple is just what is called a read-only list. So if I set A, 
A tuple is parentheses. If I did one comma two comma three and I printed that, essentially a tuple is a grouping of data. In this case, I'm grouping three integers, one, two, and three. Now they don't have to be all integers or all the same data types. So I can say 4.5. And so that can be a heterogeneous or, homoge or homogeneous grouping of values. So if I did this, notice we get one, two, three, four, five. And I can actually print a single element using what is known as the subscript operator. So the subscript operator are the square brackets. And if I say sub one, so how we read line five is print a sub one. Now in Python, unlike R, if you're familiar with R, in Python, all of our indices start at zero. And so one is actually the second element that I want to print out, which if we look at our tuple, is going to be the value two. So when I print out the value two, you see that it prints out the value that it's looking at. So a sub one actually prints out two. So if I want 4.5, we have to go zero, one, two, three. So it's sub three. And when I do sub three, notice we get the single element 4.5. And so this is a great way to group them. Now, once again, I said this is read only. So if I was trying to reassign a certain item in this tuple, you're going to see that Python says, hey, look, tuple object does not support assignment. And so that's where lists come into play. Lists are resizable. That means I can add elements, subtract elements from them, or I can mutate the contents of them. I can change the contents of it. And so a list is very simple in that instead of parentheses, we use square brackets. And so this creates a new list. And so inside of this, a list, once again, I can add elements, subtract elements from them, and I'll show you how to do that. Or I could actually change the content. So now when I run this, you'll see that 4.5 goes to 6.5. And if I sprint out the type of A, you'll notice that it actually has its own data type called a list. And there we go, list. Now, if I wanted to add values, there are two ways I can do it. There's one called append, which puts it at the end, and one called insert. I did a.append, and I can append anything, even a string. Let's say we append Let's say we append hello here and see what occurs. Now I'm gonna print the entire thing A and hello. Okay, notice we still have a class list and our list grew from one, two, three, six point five. Now notice I this is 6.5 because I modified it on line five here. And then we also added hello in inside of it. Now that append always adds to the back of the list, but what if I wanted to add something inside the list? So we use a.insert. Now you can see, well, when this pops up, the first, this takes two parameters now. It says, okay, where do you want to insert it and what do you want to insert? And the important thing is, is whatever value I get, it's going to insert before that element. So if I set zero, it's always going to add it at the very top. It will always be the first element. So we'll say hello again. And let's notice now it's hello, one, two, three, 6.5. So if I wanted to store it in a three, remember whenever I do an insert, it stores it before. So if I want it one, two, hello, three, 4.5, we know this is index zero, index one, index two. And so I'm gonna put insert two. And notice I get one, two, hello, three, 6.5. Now what if I wanted to delete that? So I can use DEL, Number one, to delete an entire variable, but I can also use it to delete a single element of a list item. And so let's say we wanna delete the three. Well, we have to look down here because we inserted hello. So we know this is index zero, index one, index two, index three. And so we will delete a sub three. So we're saying, okay, even though a sub three is a value, we're saying delete this value off the list. And when I do this, we're gonna get one, two, hello, 6.5. Three is now deleted. And so list data types you're going to use all the time because it's great for grouping data, it's great for finding data, growing, shrinking, that sort of stuff. Remember, a tuple is a read-only version of this, and so a list is much more powerful. The second data type is what's called a dictionary. And we use curly braces to form a dictionary. Now this is what's called an empty dictionary, but if I was to print out the type of A, you'll see the shortened dictionary to D-I-C-T, dict. In this case, it's an empty dictionary. So a dictionary is, well, let's go back to a list. A list uses an index to find a value. A dictionary is also known as a map in C++, and what it does is it uses any data type that you want to identify a value. It's what's called a key value pair. And the way it looks is, if I just use the curly braces right here, we're gonna create an empty dictionary. Just like a list, a dictionary is growable and it's also shrinkable. So in this case, if I wanted to grow it, I would just add a key. So let's call this key equals value. 
So you can see we're still using the subscript operator and we're saying a sub key. Now it doesn't exist yet because I just created a empty dictionary. I'm gonna say a sub key equals value. Well, what Python is gonna do is gonna look in this data type, find out that, hey, look, you don't have the, the key called key. In this case, it's a string and it's not equal to anything. And so it's gonna create the key. And so if we print a, you see that now we have key equals value. And so if I wanted to do, if I wanted to get the actual value off that, I would say a sub key. And so now what we do is we can find the element value by using the key's name. And so notice on the bottom here on the screen, we have key value. And then whenever I subscript key, we get the value. And so if I wanted to modify a certain key, I could say the value. And so we have this two of the same key. Now in dictionaries, you can only have one key. And so what this is gonna do is it's not gonna create two things called key key. Instead, it's going to overwrite the previous key. So let's take a look at what that does. So notice now key is the value instead of just value, and we get the value coming out. Now, just like on a list, we can subtract elements. So what this will do is because key is the only key in there, this goes back to being an empty dictionary. And so that's how we add and that's how we subtract. Now the thing about dictionaries in here, this is not an ordered dictionary. There is such thing as an ordered dictionary in Python, but this is unordered. It's gonna store the key and the value in the most efficient way possible. And so you cannot think of these as, as an ordered way. Now I'll show you how to look at all the keys so that we can actually step through them, but we won't do that until we get into loops because we need to go through each key individually. And so that is how a dictionary is going to work. We use a dictionary and it can be any data type that you want as your key. So I can actually make it sort of look like a list, but if I wanted it to be a list like that starts at one instead of zero, when we print it, notice we have a sum one now. Okay, so it can be any data type as the key, any data type as the value, and Python will just handle it as that. So that's a dictionary and that is a list as well as a tuple. So this is the thing about a list in a dictionary. So let's take a look at the lists that we have here. We have a list of one, two, three. If I said B equals A, some of you might think that that just copies A into B. Well, let's do del A sum one. So that should delete the element two and let's print B. So if it did in fact make a copy, B should still be one, two, three, whereas A should now store one and three. Well, let's go ahead and run the code and notice it stores one and three. And so whenever we do B equals A, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, B, you are now assigned to the exact same list that A is equal to. So this is unlike those floats, those integers where it copies the value. And so we have to be careful about lists and dictionaries because whenever we use the assignment operator, it's not gonna make a copy. Instead, it's going to assign it. And so to get over that, we use this helper function called dot copy. So if I say a dot copy, what that's going to do is it's gonna provide me two separate lists. Now the reason Python did this is because copying a list, if we had a list of a million elements, now I have to have a list of two million elements. And so if I just wanted a reference of it, B equals A doesn't make two million elements. We're now referring to the same one million elements. We just have two different names for it. And so that's why they did that. Now let's take a look at what happens here. Notice B is equal to one, two, three. So let's go ahead and print A just to prove to you that A is going to be different than B because we use copy. So B is one, two, three, A is one comma three because we deleted element two out of just A. And so if you want to copy a list or dictionary, you have to use dot copy. Once again, if I say B equals A, it's going to store a reference. They refer to the exact same list, which won't do what you want it to do. And that is essentially all that I wanted to talk about today. So you've learned about data types and variables. So let's do a little bit of a recap, make sure we all understand what's going on and let's see if we covered our learning objectives. So identify different data types. If I wanted to identify an integer, it's just a number without a decimal. If I wanted to identify a floating point number, it would be an integer followed by a decimal followed by the fractional portion. Now that fractional portion can be dot zero and that will still give me a floating point number. If I wanted a string, it can be in double quotes. I typically use double quotes because a lot of other programming languages require that a string be in double quotes, but Python also allows you to use single quotes, which is right next to your enter, enter key. So shift single quote will give you a double quote. And we talked about list. We can create a list with using the square brackets. We can create a tuple by using the parentheses, and we can create a dictionary by using the curly braces. 
And so those are the data types. So you could always check the data type by using type. So once again, instead of print A, I can say print type A. And instead of printing what A contains, it's gonna print what the type of A is. In this case, it's a list. So if you're ever confused, uh, let's see, what would data type that would that be? You can always use type. So keep that in your back pocket, type, to always be able to tell what type it is. Unlike C++ or Java and stuff like that, where you have to explicitly give each variable name a type, Python infers it. And so sometimes it's not obvious. So there you go, you have type. If it's not obvious, you can use type, and that way there you can always find out what your variable names are, or variable types are. So we talked about understanding what data types are used in certain situations. This is where I showed you where that floating point number has a certain range of numbers that it can actually reproduce. And so if you don't need decimals, always use integers. If you do need decimals, you have to use a floating point number. Just keep in mind that an integer, essentially we're gonna call it an infinite precision, even though obviously it cannot be, but it's a large precision, whereas a floating point number has a much smaller precision, both on the whole portion and the fractional portion. And so we talked about create, add to, and delete from lists and dictionaries. If we wanna create them, we essentially say A equals square brackets. Now there is another way, A equals list, but they're sort of telling you not to do that anymore. So instead use the square brackets to create a list. B, that will create me a dictionary. Now these are empty, and C, that will create me an empty tuple. Now hopefully in the back of your mind, you're thinking on line five, well if I create an empty tuple, it has to stay an empty tuple, and that is correct. Tuples are read-only, I can't add, I can't subtract, I can't change them after I've assigned the variable. Now, I can say C equals one, two, three. However, I'm just reusing C. So the old C on line five here goes away, it gets deleted, and gets reassigned to tuple one, two, three. Remember, to add something, I could either use insert or append. Append always adds to the back of the list. Insert takes an index in that you wanna store before that index. So if I insert an index one, it's actually gonna be moved into the zero place. Uh, so B, if I want to add something to a dictionary, I just say B in whatever the key is equals to a value 10 or something like that. If I want to delete from a list or a dictionary, I use del, and choose what either the key is or whatever the index is. And that's how I'm going to remove and add into it. So remember, we don't use append or insert for a dictionary because the dictionary that we're using here is what's called an unordered dictionary. Python is going to use the keys and store it in the most efficient way possible. So if it had to order them, it can't do that. And so because it's a dictionary, it's going to try to order them in the most efficient way possible. So it doesn't really mean anything to say insert or append because it's unordered. So there we go, we've covered all the learning objectives, we covered all the data types, how to actually check your data types. So I would recommend play around with this, see what happens when you divide things, add things together, and always check it using that type. Now, don't just type type because if I did something like this, it'll work, you just won't see anything. So I always remember to put print type B so that you can actually see the results that you want. And there you go. Welcome to the second module of data types and variables. Hopefully you're, you're staying on top of everything. This is not really challenging yet, but if you've never seen programming before, it's kind of a different way of thinking of things logically and okay, we have a computer with a finite number of zeros and ones that it can store. And so we sort of have to think about a problem and not just mathematically, we have an infinite number of digits and stuff like that. That's obviously not true. So welcome once again, and hopefully you learned something. Have a good day.